Welcome back to the bench. Today we have another Vertex Standard uh, VX3000U. And this one has no audio. Or no sound output. Every Everything else seems to be working, but uh, we should hear beeping right now. We should hear, you know, squelch gone right there, hitting the monitor button, nothing. I plug in a external speaker. Still nothing. So, let's investigate and see what it could be. Okay, so the first thing I would like to do is if we get out our schematic here, we can see here that our speaker is right here. This is our three pin speaker jack going here, and this is our audio chip. This triangle is uh, Q1509, which is our audio chip right here. So let's, as you can see, there's all these voltages here. So let's probe it and see if we are getting all of these voltages. So it should be uh, pin one, two, three, four, five. So we'll turn this on. I'll zoom in just a bit. Let's even get the oscilloscope going too, just so we can test for audio output. Because I'm going to let you in on a little secret. I already tried a different speaker on this, and it did not make a difference. Crown this out. So, pin 5 should be getting. 13.8 volts we're getting 1.4 pin 4 should be 1.6 we're getting 0.15 pin ooh, pin 2 0.8 volts we're getting nothing there I'll just make sure I'm getting uh, yeah, we are getting line voltage uh, pin 1 should be 1.3, we're getting nothing. So, it's kind of safe to say that pin 5, 13.8 volts, isn't coming in. And it's, here's our 13, I don't know why it's called 13.6 volt source over here. But that's, it should be coming through this transistor. Either this transistor's failed or it's being pulled down. Let's figure out where Q1511 is. So here's our audio chip. It's going to be on the other side of the board, of course, where it's uh, the worst side to work on. So our audio chip is here. There's Q1511. There's Q1512. So that's just great. Now, is there anywhere we can probe on this side of the board? Q1511, there's a resistor R1538, which is there, 
which should be getting 13.1 volts. That little pad. Could it be the leg of that cap? What I'm looking for is a, a test point via that I can go into just to see if I'm getting any of those voltages without pulling the board out. But unfortunately, it looks like we're going to have to pull the board out. Uh, 1538 and that 136. There is a big trace. This, this giant trace here looks like it's a 13.8 line. So, I mean, the rest of the radio's on. That does look like our main 13.8 volt trace. So we are getting it through there. It's just a matter of, is this this transistor bad in input or anything? Okay, well, I guess all we can really do now is pull the board. So let's do that. Pull everything up. Put our ribbon cable up here. off now the reason I've gone straight to this is um, the external speaker wasn't working so there's a chance that this speaker could also be bad and we can test that right now just to eliminate that but it's clearly something else because the external speaker is not working um, this could also be bad I mean these front loaded speakers that are in the face plates they always go bad over time it's just too much for these tiny little speakers people always max them out when they're in a work truck or whatever so we've got our uh, our uh, signal generator here and I've got what, one kilohertz tone on there. Yeah, that speaker's working. So that eliminates that. Now let's continue. smack Just spinning the whole connector with it tight 
Okay. Let's get the old solder sucker turned on. This board will be ready to come out. It's always curious to see. Look how it's just sliding around. Uh, tells me there's not a lot of thermal grease on this thing or it's dried up, which it's clearly dried up quite a bit. This radio's had some use. Just because I don't want that crap all over me. All right. Of course, it's all over me. We'll plug this external speaker in for testing reasons. We want to see what's going on at Q1511 to start with. So that main. that main kind of trunk there uh, this one here it's gonna focus on me what Don't focus on me this main line here should be 13.8 volts let's find a good ground okay perfect well, you can't see I gotta get this thing working again. So 13.9, perfect. Well, you know, we knew we had that. Now, so there should be 13.1 volts right here. And there's not. Now, power is going through that resistor 1538 we're only getting 1.4 volts there so that's what we were getting on pin 5 so the question is is it because this resistor is bad or is it because this other one, Q1512, is pulling it down. So let's look on the Q1512 side. Um, right on... We've got that C1528. That should have 7.3 volts. And we do. So that 9 volt source is working, it goes through a resistor first, the uh, R1540, which we don't, oh we do see there, so that's a, a 9 volt rail right here, 8.87, close enough. So we're getting that, we got our 7.3 volts like we should, okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove this resistor here which is uh, R1535 and that's going to tell us which one's bad. <coughs> it's 
best for hot air, but uh, there we go. Put that there for safekeeping. I'm going to replace that with a new one anyways. Okay, so now let's power it up. See what it does. Did not hear anything. So we should have our 13.8 here. We do. And here we should have 13.1 and we don't. What do we have here? Nothing. Got that seven volts. Okay. So that being said, I'm gonna think our it's made no change at our uh, Q1511 point. We've eliminated the uh, Q1512 out of the circuit. So let's replace Q1511 because I do happen to have those on hand. I do not have the other one on hand. So hopefully that's all it takes. And again, I should be using hot air. But this will work for today. Try to save that little resistor in there. There we go. So that's Q fifteen eleven out. Clean up the pads from the resistor we took out. Putting the same resistor back in because I don't have any quarter watt resistor uh, surface mounts. And uh, this one's a quarter watt, which is quite a bit, so I tested it. It is uh, 1K, like it should be. So, there we go. Let's see if this makes any difference at all. Oh, hello. There we go. That must have been it. Awesome. Okay. So just so you know, the, uh, that part number is impossible to get like literally impossible to get so uh a replacement similar replacement is a 2sb 1124 it's supposed to be a 2sb 1301 but they're just obsolete so a 2sb 1124 has um slightly better specifications which uh is great it's, it's a bit higher rating so not that that benefits us in any way, it's just uh, when you're replacing transistors, you want to, you know, keep the number a little bit higher for your 
tolerations, yeah, which is its own separate topic, so <laughs> we won't get into those details right now, but um, that's it. So let's clean this up. I'll unpower it here and uh, clean off some of this flux, and then we'll also clean that and re-grease it, put the board back in. Somebody's been in here before and changed this cap. I bet that's probably why I got it this way. They uh, tried changing that cap, hoping it would solve something, but it looks like they, they did it all from the top, and it's not quite... Uh, the pads aren't properly soldered down here, so let's clean that up. That's a decent brand cap, by the way. Well, seems like the audio is working. Let's uh, put a tone into it. Yes. All right, well, there we have it another successful repair so let's move on to the next project and uh thanks for watching guys